Hickok 45 here with the Dirty Harry 44 Magnum Model 29 Chapter 2. One of my favorite revolvers. Uh, get off my lawn! Get out of here! Yeah! Who is that? <laughs> That'll keep him off my lawn. Oh, no, wait a minute. That was a different movie, wasn't it? Okay, that's all right. Different firearm. That's okay. It was Clint, and this is the 44 Magnum. Six and a half inch, Model 29, and you have seen it. You better have. Well, actually, probably thousands of you have not because you're new. So I'll link to maybe one or two of them, but we have several videos with this. Dirty, hairy, 44 Magnum. That's kind of what I call it because it's the six and a half incher, and the, it's the, uh, you know, the Dirty, hairy model, okay? And uh, I've got the four, and I've got an eight and three eights, but uh, this, this might be my favorite, even though it's not my first. This is a nice one. So, it's fun to bring it back out. I just enjoy this revolver so much and this caliber. And I want to thank, even though, well, almost any firearm, but especially a revolver. You can load different different power factors and, you know, because there's, there's no springs that it has to rely on. You could load, here I go giving you information you didn't ask for, and I didn't even mean to tell you. And I'm aim charging you for it. What's wrong with me? Yeah, really, you could uh, you could take a 44 Special if you're a hand loader, or if you need someone loaded one, if you wanted to. I'm not giving you advice on this, but you could load that down to where it, it you know is down to 200 feet per second, 150 feet per second, if you wanted to. Uh, I well, maybe I shouldn't say that. There's a thing, a phenomenon with uh, larger cartridges. You get too light a load with certain kinds of powder, like in a 45 Colt. You can have some weird reactions and things. But but by and large, you could put wads in there and take care of it. But if you really wanted to do that, you could load a, as light a load as you want. Is my point uh, safely a safe load? And it would still function in this firearm uh, normally, right? Because there's no springs like with a semi-automatic, the slide has to retract. You have to have a certain power factor to get the slide to work reliably and all that kind of thing. Whereas with a revolver, you're doing it manually. You're bringing up the next round and whatever came out of that chamber is kind of irrelevant as to what's in the next one. <laughs> all right, so again, no charge for that. So let's shoot something hot now. You want to? All right. These are some factory loads and these we've shot before. These are pretty warm even in my rifle, my Marlin. Uh, they've got a nice little jolt to them. And, and I don't like to shoot them too much in my 4-inch 29. They're no fun. Or my 3-inch 29, 6-29s. They kick a little bit. I'm a baby. Here I am with a 44 Magnum. What am I doing with a 44 Magnum if I'm a baby? All right, let's shoot that water jug. Ooh, let's see what I mean. <laughs> and they're even powerful enough to go through that watermelon. I think. <laughs> They're powerful enough to make it just disappear immediately, right? <laughs> oh boy, that was cool. And uh, if I hold the gun right, I get enough velocity out of them to go through that. They'll even smoke a pot. Did he fire five or did he fire six? <laughs> All right, so yeah, they'll smoke pot. Look at the smoke still in the air. Can I run down there and sniff it? Bad joke, right? All right, dad jokes. I'm loaded with dad jokes, grandpa jokes, uncle jokes, whatever. Uh, mainly lame jokes, right? Okay, I guess that's what a dad joke is, a lame joke. Uh, yeah, man, I'm gonna shoot some more if you'll let me before I do. appreciate their support. And uh, this is, again, one of my faves. If you haven't shot a revolver, you know what I always say, what's wrong with you? You need to do it, and uh, you need to be saving up to buy one, not just shoot one, okay? Uh, I get a percentage of every revolver that's sold, no matter what the brand. Yeah, you, you'd think that, wouldn't you? Because I'm always trying to uh, convince you. Because I know there's still a lot of people out there who have not discovered the joys of a revolver yet. And uh, I feel sorry for you. You know, you need to do something about it, you know. There might be some kind of therapy or program you could join. I don't know, but you need to discover a revolver. Uh, these are some of my hand loads. They're a moderate magnum. 
And uh, that's what I have fired the most of in my life since I started loading 44s back in 73, 74. That's how I put uh, 70, well, 75,000 now through my uh, 8 and 3 8 model 29. Most of them were this load, okay? It's a nice load. It's plenty powerful enough. You can tell. You saw what he did to the cowboy. Watch me hit him again. Okay? It's not a special load. <laughs> All right, let's go over there and uh, see if I can hit a uh, buffalo. It might be a good buffalo round. I don't know. Yeah, it'll do it. It might be a good gong round. Boom. Even a ram, a sheep. Right. Even a red square plate. Maybe even a hog ground. <laughs> All right, I must have hit him low. Oh boy. It's even a pretty good two liter round, I think. Am I still, am I still loaded? No. All right, I didn't think I was. All right, so uh, that's a nice round. Uh, it really is. I used to shoot that round in competition, IHMSA, long range competition. And uh, I wasn't, you know, the best at that, but I, I did okay. I'd have my good days, just like any uh, you know, kind of competition. You practice, you work at it, you'll have a good day in the, here and there, win a match maybe here and there. And uh, at that time, I was casting my own bullets, 240 grain bullets out of wheel weights, load my own ammo just like these. And, you know, just as about as accurate as anything. That's one reason I, uh, uh, again, another little side line I will charge you for but uh, that's one reason I, I kind of scoff at people making too big a deal about accuracy in a handgun especially if you're standing and shooting about oh this barrel is more accurate you know just different things like that or even this pistol is more accurate than that one if you're going to shoot it just standing shooting this kind of thing unless you're an Olympic shooter or Olympic skill shooter uh, the firearm is going to be so much more accurate quote unquote, than you are, than I am, okay, generally speaking. Because I did just as fine, casting my own bullets out of wheel weight and lead, I could scrounge and loading up the ammo and, and not even sorting cases or anything like that. When it comes right down to it, you know what uh, is the gigantic determining factor uh, as to whether or not you hit the target you're aiming at, okay? It's not whether I've got a Remington case, a Winchester case, a Federal case in here mixed up. Uh, I've even got a cast bullet that might have a little bubble and it weighs three in the lead and it, it weighs three grains less than the one next to it. Yeah, all that can have a little bit of impact, but when it comes right down to it, here's what makes the difference. It's, it's you pulling the trigger when the sight's on the target breaking the trigger at the right time that's just that's just what it is i'm sorry uh let's we'll see if i can hit that turkey up there on the top row 44 special okay I'm a little high I think that was high too there we go and uh how about uh well we got some stuff here that needs to be hit look at this <laughs> I'm saying you're talking about accuracy and I missed the two liter because I just pulled up and shot. But really, that's what makes a difference. Yeah, just like that. Just like missing that two liter. It all comes down to whether or not you're ready to pull the trigger at the right time and break the trigger when it's on the target. That's the biggest, biggest factor. So, uh, new shooters, millions, thousands of you, millions actually, don't get hung up on and uh, get hung up on practice okay and getting ammo if you can but get hung up on that sort of thing and technique and training and and just uh you know dry firing and just practicing getting that trigger to break at the right time and holding your sights on the target and all those sorts of things and it depends on what you're shooting if you're a defensive pistol like this or what depends on what you're, you're shooting all right i don't want to lose my man car so i'm gonna pull out some warmer magnums again okay yeah, man, let's put six of these in here so that uh, Clint Eastwood won't think less of me. All right, even though he carried kind of a, well, you know, he <laughs> that controversial line he uses in or says in uh, uh, Magnum Force, I believe is where he says that. They're down there at that range shooting with those other bad cops. 
and he says that he, well, how's he phrase it? I have a special load I use to reduce recoil, da -da, better follow-up shots, or whatever he says. But he said the way he says it is, uh, I, I I use a special load. I think is his phrasing. So you don't know what he means, capital S, as in 44 special, or like these. This is a special load I concocted, you know. So, and I, I interpret it to mean this really, a special load that's not quite as hot as these, better control. Uh, but I think someone was telling me, based on uh, the, the screenplay and before that, what, what they really meant to say was uh, not 44 Special. They didn't mean for it to be that interpreted, I think. I don't know. Who knows? It, hey, it's fiction. Why are we arguing about it? <laughs> I got a newsflash for you. The guy, Dirty Harry, is a fictional character, although it's based on a, on a real detective, I think. <laughs> Boom! I, I forgot what I was shooting. Guess what reminded me when I pulled the trigger? <laughs> it, it reminded me very quickly. Oh, nice, nice. Let's put one of these hot ones on the gong. Boom. We got there pretty fast, didn't it? You almost, uh, we'll see. Just do it. Nice. Nice, got one more round. Let's hit this bowling pin right here. <laughs> yeah, magnum force. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, I know what I was saying. I was, uh, and I'm going to let you go. But uh, in, in a way, it's almost more rewarding and more fun when you shoot a little bit lighter load, like at the gong or anything far away because the report, the sound of the blast has diminished enough to where, bing, you can hear the, the steel being hit. Whereas with that loud one, at least in my ears, where I'm standing, you're standing in a different place than I am. Uh, the sound has not uh, been reduced enough before it hits the steel, so I don't hear the gong as well you know, with that. And plus it's louder, so that's cool. That's one thing that's neat about shooting a suppressed, you know, that kind of thing. So we'll shoot six more here. Uh, I just want to get it out and shoot it. There's a lot of it, and I, I, I just love you all so much. I wanted you to be here when I do it, okay? Didn't want you to miss it, because I know it's one of your favorite uh, pistols, just as it is mine, or revolvers. And again, the six and a half inch Model 29, Smith & Wesson. You know, it's a pin barrel. It's an old one, made in the 70s. It's uh, specifically a, uh, a yeah, 29-2. 29, 29 and uh, you know, it's got the target hammer, trigger, the wide trigger, the wide hammer. Many of you have seen it before. They're kind of a work of art. There are a lot of folks that prefer a Ruger. Rugers probably will last longer there. I mean, I had to do a little repair work on my, my other one. I've got 75,000 rounds through. Uh, new trigger pin and ejector rods and things tightened up. And, uh, but by and large, you keep them running too. And uh, so a lot of people prefer the Ruger because you, you can shoot anything in it forever. And it's, you know, it'll, it'll, it's, it's more durable, it's heavier, all that. But uh, many of us just prefer the lines of the Smith. You know, it's just, uh, you know, this design has been around since when, 1890s. You know, this is just a swelled up version of, of those early what, M and P's kind of. And uh, just a, a beautiful gun, beautiful gun, historical and uh, not hysterical, historical. So, you know, we did, I hope you see, maybe I'll, link, I'll try to link to two or three of those things if I think about it. Uh, the Clint Eastwood tribute we did and uh, things like that because uh, there's a lot of good movies featuring this uh, revolver and that's where some of us, it helped us to get hooked on it, right? Uh, if you're already a shooter and you love magnums and you love hand loading like I did and all that, it, it just, uh, came along at a perfect time, of course, to uh, to help uh, feed your fever, but uh, it also got a lot of people into shooting, probably, and, and buying revolvers, so the old Dirty Harry. That's why I call this one the Dirty Harry. Uh, Model 29. All right, six more. What do you want me to shoot? Okay, Ralph, I heard you, uh, even through that pizza you're trying to eat. You want me to shoot this red plate, uh, square plate here close? I heard that because I never shoot it. Yep, that's a lot. That makes sense. I never shoot the thing, do I? And, and the round went too. Yeah, heard that. 
<laughs> I missed that. That's pretty bad. Okay, I, I understand. I never shoot the things. And I, I'm about to leave a two liter. I heard you. There we go. We don't want to do that. And let's shoot that barrel over there. We might not hear it. That new barrel, drum. I heard it. Yeah, I heard that. It might be empty. Yeah. So uh, the old Dirty Harry 44 Magnum, sweet revolver. I, I could never shoot it too much. Really, I couldn't. Uh, just really thoroughly enjoy it. I have enjoyed shooting 44. Wow, probably about as much as I have over the years. Nine millimeter, 40, 45, 45 Colt. I guess I've shot a lot of rounds of a lot of different calibers, haven't I? But I have shot a lot of 44, loaded a lot of 44 ammo, cast a lot of 44 bullets, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry. You have the addiction, you just have it. Not much I can do about it. So I don't fight it. I just uh, just go with it. Okay. So we really appreciate y'all coming around and uh, enjoying this fine firearm with us. Appreciate you supporting the people that support us. Keep the show going. We have a lot of fun doing this and. Uh, you know, shooting is fun if you didn't know that. Life is good. Oh, fire. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh, man. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. TalonGunGrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips. So go check them out. Also, Ballastall. They're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water soluble and non-toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So Ballastall, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45. And also, I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J O H N underscore H I C K O K 45 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos. <laughs>